Star Sector, a game I've followed for a long, long goddamn time, easily has what's probably the best combat system in any game I've ever played. That might sound like high praise, and it is, but oh boy have these devs sure earned it. I'll be talking about a handful of mods here, but all I say will apply to the base game as well, except for a few examples. Oh, and I know a lot of videos don't tend to get made about this game, so devs, big fan of your game by the way, if you are listening, thank you for this tremendous bargain. $15 for this game is an absolute steal. I'm gonna try to limit this video to be about Star Sector's combat exclusively. I'm sorry, I'm trying my best here. So of course, in this video about the combat, first thing we need to talk about is the graphics. The dev team is what, four people? Maybe the office plant? And it's looked this good for 10 years? Star Sector genuinely feels like a AAA title that you got for $15, peddled by some geniuses who have been passed by by the entire industry for no well-explained reason. Okay, okay, fine, enough gushing about the game. Fine, subscribe. This is a ship. Hey look, it's got friends. Hey look, it's got a shield. Hey look, it's teleporting through dimensions. Ships are equipped with weapons, as you might imagine, and they have four damage types. Kinetic, explosive, fragmentation, and energy. Each are used mainly against a different part of enemy ships, and this is the main building block for all of the game's combat. Ships have shields, then armor, and then the hull underneath. Kinetic is best using a shield, high explosive against armor, fragmentation against hull, and energy is a little bit of an all-rounder. These are missiles. Some track, some go all over the damn place, some are dumb fire, some explode into many more, and others make giant fucking wormholes that rip your frame rate and fleet into many, many pieces. When you fire or your shield receives damage, your flux goes up. It's essentially your heat. Overload by going to max and the results can be... Undesirable. At least, if it's your own ship. Remember that everyone in the game goes by these rules. Every ship in the game has a unique ability, by default bound to F. These can be practically anything, and boy do modded ships go wild with it. From vanilla there's teleporting, flares, generic buffs, speed, more maneuverability, an unkillable shield, you get the gist. In mods, the unknowable horrors get a lot more intensive. Now originally I did have this really long segment here where I talked about a bunch of examples from a load of different mods, but I just want to show you the crown jewel. Please allow me to demonstrate, from our benefactors at the VIC, the Star Sector equivalent of Yone Ult. Nothing personal! As mentioned earlier, some ships can serve as carriers with fighters or bombers. Sometimes a bastard child between a fighter and a frigate. And by some ships, I mean all ships bigger than a frigate. With converted hangars, just about every single ship can be a carrier. I highly recommend the Valiants from Diable Avionics. Ah, but this screen. This is the refit screen, easily accessible at any time by pressing R. One of Star Sector's many, many fantastic keybinds that make navigating its menus exceptionally easy and pleasant. Every ship has a set amount of... good boy points, which can be used to outfit the ship. With every weapon, fighter, flux vent, and hull modification, of which converted hangers is one of, costing varying amounts. I love this system. It puts experimentation right at the forefront, and hunting down new weapons to try becomes a really fun side project on your way to becoming the sector's richest space bitcoin millionaire. But it's not just your ship you have to worry about. You're crafting a whole fleet alongside your empire, after all. The search for improving your fleet is never-ending, and you have so many ways to do it. It's all about finding more efficient ways to complete the same tasks, improving your combat effectiveness bit by bit, and best of all, it's totally optional. I have no idea why you wouldn't interact with this side of the game, but you don't have to if you don't want to. There are presets for a reason. Having a sizable fleet opens up a lot of stuff in gameplay. Massive fleet battles are always a joy, even if they sometimes make my computer start crying with a high battle size. Being comfortable with your newfound armada also makes serious bounty hunting very viable. Huge payouts are to be found for those who go looking for them. About the time you were able to reliably massacre stations, you can consider yourself to be the new untouchable warlord of the sector. Some battles will still be really, really, really hard fought though, especially with the, um, the, um, <clears throat> never mind. Positioning is a huge part of combat. How you position depends heavily on your chosen flagship, obviously. If you decide to pilot a huge capital ship, you're gonna wanna, most likely, spearhead the enemy and take on the scariest looking foe. Drag out a carrier instead and you'll wanna identify the best targets to mark and send your fighters or bombers after. But a destroyer? Specialized in harassing? That's my jam. With these super overpowered VIC laid law accelerators and mass drivers, this Sparrowhawk goes from a pretty decent cruiser to an utterly devastating assassin that specializes in... Advanced ramming maneuvers, shall we say, and I love it. Anyway, the AI in this game is surprisingly very competent, except for when you see a carrier charge and headfirst into enemies, but that's besides the point, you can't, can't win them all. You'll see ships with high flux not only actively retreat, 
but have allied ships come in front of them to screen for incoming projectiles. Honestly, I have so little to complain about with the AI, it just works. Thank you, Todd. Which is high, high, high praise, considering how complex I imagine this was to make. Watching fighters devour a ship will never quite get old. The main AI sticking point I can think of is that they really don't handle phase ships very well, but I mean, I, I don't either. Oh yeah, also, this game isn't just the campaign. If you want, there are a bunch of carefully curated missions by both the original dev team and modders alike. These can be fun in their own right and for testing purposes. I do want to touch on this game's modding scene for a bit, which I did bring up occasionally throughout this video. It's batshit. The one that really got me the most is the Kingdom of Terra. This is their strongest ship. Like, what? How? Every Seiwen can be individually customized too, and I can give them all converted hangars? While I'll probably stay a VIC loyalist for quite some time, I cannot deny that the Katana ships of the Diablo Corporation to the Kingdom of Terra's tail whips aren't appealing. Most mods you'll be able to find have so much work put into them, and it's really impressive what they've managed to do in this engine. If you are looking to play this game, which I would obviously highly recommend, the link to buy a copy will be in the description. It's only 15 goddamn dollars, remember, please support these devs. Maybe take a look at Captain Trek's slightly outdated guide to the Modiverse and the Star Sector Mod Index after you get familiar with the base game. These are all the mods I was using for this video. I'm sure you know the standard YouTuber spiel by now, you know, subscribe, give me money, etc. Oh, and coming up either later this month or next month, I've got quite the Total War project coming.